In a traditional Chinese tea shop, two scientists are seeking sustainable solutions. A special vitrocarps into the culprit. Yeah. Ian and Susie's challenge is to transform biology into economics. Do those go in the same time as the cuttings? Like all scientists, we're interested in finding out how things work. But at the same time, we recognise and are keen to use the knowledge that we get and apply it in order to make better forests. Timber from Dipterocarps has an established market. To grow them in plantations would relieve one pressure on natural forests. But you can't just plant Dipterocarp seedlings anywhere and expect them to grow. This was an area which uh, was an experimental plot set up to see whether diptrocarps could survive uh, when planted under different spacing. They removed 16 rows of acacias and planted 16 rows of diptrocarps. And the only ones that survived are those just along the edge where they're next to the acacias where they got some shade and some uh, protection. Whereas the rest in this area were exposed to high sunshine, uh, high light intensity, high temperatures, and they just didn't make it. So these diptrocarp cuttings are getting some help. From Sue C's collection of mycorrhizal fungi. Inspired by what happens in the natural forest, Dr. Lee and her assistant are artificially inoculating them. Well, this fungus is a fungus that we've isolated from uh, acacia mangium plantations and uh, we know that it can form mycorrhizas and so now we are going to use this as the inoculum for our diptero cup cuttings here as well. The seedlings are to be pioneers in a diptero carp plantation. When they're bigger, Susie takes them to an experimental plot. But something's already growing there. The fast-growing foreigner, Acacia mangium. The trees are about to be given a totally new career to act as nursemaids for baby diptrocarps. Two rows of acacias are removed. Those left standing will provide light conditions similar to when a tree falls, creating a gap in the natural forest. The rest of the seedling support system is underground. Mycorrhizal fungi on the seedlings can also link up with the surrounding acacias, creating a localised wood-wide web. The complexity below ground may be in many cases driving ecosystems promoting organisms which might otherwise not do very well simply by the benefits that have been gained from joining into a shared mycorrhizal mycelial network. This could be just the boost the seedlings need. While the diptrocarps take a longer time to grow, uh, we reckon that the wood that they produce is of better quality and we think that they should have fewer disease and pest problems compared to some of the exotics which are established in plantations. This is what Susie hopes her experiment will eventually look like. Two rows of acacia interspersed with two rows of younger diptrocarps. Eventually, the diptrocarps will grow to be taller than their nurses. The acacias will be felled, leaving a plantation of tropical hardwood trees. <laughs>